Now we're getting into feedback. The first topology is the inverting configuration. This is what it looks like. We are using the same opiate part that we created in the last video, so we are still dealing with idealities. With the addition of just two resistors, this circuit becomes a closed loop with controllable gain. The power supply and the feedback are both tied to the inverting terminal, hence inverting configuration and negative feedback. Let's see if we can't figure out what the closed loop gain of the amplifier will be and then verify it with the simple simulation. To find the gain of a system, we take the output signal and divide it by the input signal. So first we need to get an expression for V in and V out in terms of the resistance. To do this, we'll perform nodal analysis on this node here. Since we are still working with the ideal op-amp that we built in the last video, we can make a few assumptions here. First is that V plus and V minus are equal to one another, and since V plus is physically tied to ground, the voltage seen here at this node is zero. So to perform nodal analysis, we're going to take the sum of the currents going into the node, which so if we call this one I1, uh, that current, which is equal to voltage divided by resistance, will be V1 or V in minus zero, so just V in divided by R1. Let's just make a little text of that. So we have I1 is equal to V in minus zero. divided by R1. And here we have, um, this is we know that this is zero volts, and we know that current flows from high to low potential. The current going into this node is flowing from V out into this node. So we're going to have this current, I2, is going to be equal to V out minus zero divided by R2. So we have I2 is equal to I2 is equal to so V out minus zero divided by R2. Now we know that the sum of currents flowing into the node is equal to the sum of the currents flowing out of the node. So we have I1 flowing in this direction, then we have I2 flowing in this direction, which means they're equal and opposite, which means that I1 is equal to the negative of I2. So we have I1 is equal to negative I2. And to put down one more equation, we have that the gain is equal to V out divided by V in. Well, it looks like we can already figure out what that gain is because we have an expression with V1 here, or V in here, and we have an expression with V out here. So if we set these two equal to each other, we get that the gain is equal to V in over R1 is equal to minus V out divided by R2. No, I guess I'll go move these. So if you rearrange these terms, which would just be multiplying both sides by R2 and then dividing both sides by Vn, you get that the gain, or Vn divided by V out, opposite, V out divided by Vn is equal to negative R2 divided by R1. And that's the gain of this closed loop negative feedback inverting configuration. So let's sim it. Uh, so we first need to put some values here, and this is what's pretty cool about LT spices. Let's say you're doing a homework problem and they only give you one value for R1 and you have to compute this value. You actually don't have to do the math, which would be a simple division, but uh, you can set up this as a parameter and have it step through until it finds the, uh, the correct value that you need. So let's say uh, we have a resistance up here of 10K and we want our gain to be 10. 
In order to get a gain of 10, we would have to set this to 1k. So let's first verify it, then I'll put in some wonky value here, and then we'll set up this as a parameter and uh, find the exact value of R1 that gives us that output. Okay, so let's send this. We've got uh, V1 is equal to 1, so our output, what we should see, is negative 10 volts all the way across, and let's see if that's true. So we'll run it, we'll perform a transient analysis. Let's do something really short, 0.1 milli. Probe the output, and there we go. We see it exactly, negative 10 volts. Um, and, I mean, I'm a little, I'm cheating just a little bit by placing V1 as 1, because if you wanted to find the gain, what you would really do is you'd perform an algebraic expression up here at the top of the plot plane. So what I did was I right-clicked on V out, and it's going to give you this, um, text box here, and so the gain is actually the voltage out divided by the voltage in. So you're actually going to type in that expression. So you want to find V of V in. So it's V out divided by V in. Right. And because it's 1, it's going to be the same. Uh, but most of the time you're not going to have an easy voltage here. Um, so that's how you would do it, like if you're doing a homework problem or if you're doing a real op amp analysis and you want to find the gain. Um, all right, so let's say we don't know what this resistor is and you're doing a little bit of reverse engineering. To set something up as a parameter, you use the curly brackets. And I just do R so that I know that I'm dealing with the resistor, but you can set this as any variable that you want. And let's say this is 2.7k. I'm going to change it to 4.7k. And let's change this as well. Let's change this to 5 volts. That way we have to perform the, uh, the gain equation. And let's say we're looking for uh, a gain of 2. I'm going to drop a little text box here, so we want gain equal to 2. Now what I need to do is put down a uh, spice directive, dot op, but we are going to, we're going to do a dot step param, our param is r, and let's step it from 1k to 10k and see where we get a gain of 2. Oh, uh, but we, we'll do it in 1k increments. Mm, we'll do it in 1.2k increments. We'll do it in 1.1k increments. <laughs> Alright. And we'll run it. Okay, so we never got the gain of exactly 2. And that's because of my increments. So let's do 0.2k. And we'll go with 0.1k. We still didn't get it exactly. That's still because of the increments. <clears throat> so let's make this just a little bit nicer. Let's go here. Um, we'll just do 5k. And then here we'll go with 0.5k increments. Yeah. And we'll rerun it. That's thinking just a little bit too much for my liking. Oh, so I didn't add the K at the end. Okay. 
I was like, why is it going through so many? Let's go ahead and just halt that simulation. So when you see something crazy like this going on, you can actually just hit this little hand button. It'll stop whatever the simulation is doing, and then you can rerun it. It'll make a lot more sense. Yeah, see that? But that does. So if we look at just this segment, you can see that we have one at exactly two, and that it's going to be between... Uh, Let's see if we can figure out what this resistance was. So here we have our displayed steps. Here's our resistance values. So let's go ahead and replot this so that we can figure out what all these steps were. So select steps. So step one was 100. So this is one, two, three, and four. So on the fourth step, we got the gain of two that we wanted. So fourth step, the resistance value was 2.5K, which is exactly half of 5K, which would give us the gain of two. And that's how you use parameters to figure out the right resistance value. So let's just verify that by putting in here 2.5K. We can delete this param stepping there. And if we rerun the simulation, you see that we've got um, the gain of two with the resistance of 2.5K, which is how we found it when we stepped through uh, with the previous simulation.